Well, hello there, you fabulous interior design professional. I'm so glad you're here. I'm Kimberly Selden. I'm here every week, uh, or most weeks anyway, happy to turn the mic over if someone has a burning desire to interview a guest that they'd like to hear on the Business of Design podcast. So let us know. We have done some mic takeovers, and they have been really, really good. So there's an invitation. Here's another one. Start thinking about yourself more. (laughs) That doesn't come naturally to so many of us, particularly women, I think. That's a gross generalization. There's probably some guys listening going, well, that's just not fair. We're tired of hearing that old messaging. So maybe I'll just retract that right now. Let's say those of us in the creative industry who are also people pleasers are not terribly good at looking after ourselves first, but it's so important. And we are going to talk about a favorite subject of mine, which is financial literacy. During this episode with Danielle Hayden of Kickstart Accounting, we're going to talk about why it matters that you start saving right now for the future you want. Even if it's a very small amount, how small you say, well, even as little as $50 a month will make a difference in your life over the long run. But you have to start now. The sooner you start, the bigger that money's going to grow through compound interest. Danielle talks about the fact that she encouraged her daughter to save a dollar a day and created a compound interest chart for her daughter. So we asked Danielle, could we have that chart? And she couldn't find that one, but she gave us a different one, which is $50 a month. And you will see how quickly it adds up. And if you take it further, oh my goodness, you can see after 5, 10, 15, 20 years, it becomes a considerable nest egg, provided, of course, you don't touch it. So in this episode, we're going to talk about literal ways that you invest in yourself starting today. And I will also do a shout out for some new courses, new programs we launched at Business of Design. The first one, Money Mindset, Expertise and Value, I think is really, really important. If you've never looked at the stories you tell yourself about money your history with money, and all the ways you might stay stuck with money. It's a really good one. Plus, it will push you to define the expertise and value you bring to projects, which is really important to have in your back pocket. When someone approaches you and says, gee, I'm thinking of hiring a designer, you want to be ready to tell them why they should hire you, not just a generic designer, but you, fabulous you. The second program we launched, Salary, Revenue, Profit, and Wealth, has literally been two decades in the making. And this conversation with Danielle is a great introduction to that course. We are getting tons of inquiries people asking if they can work with Business of Design CFO Larry Goldberg. And the answer is yes, but you do have to be a boss group member to access Larry. And he stays very busy coaching boss group members and pushing them to reach new financial heights. The great thing about working with him, of course, is that spills over into the entire boss group. Everybody learns, everybody benefits. We're really thrilled to have him on board And I do think there's one boss spot left for this upcoming group that we're putting together. I hope you will be part of it. The first three days, the first boss meeting will be held in Santa Monica. It will be led by myself and Janine Laudenbach, who many of you know if you've been to retreats or conferences. You know Janine is our leadership and programming expert. And we've worked side by side for so many years We really do complete each other's thoughts. It's really so helpful for me to have Janine at events because when I hit a blank spot or don't explain something well, she jumps right in. And we want you to jump right in as well. I would love for you to listen to this podcast and then take action. Begin to save now for the future you deserve and desire. 
Of course, when we say invest in yourself, we don't just mean literally putting money aside in the bank, although that's a huge important element. It also means things like invest in the resources you need to do your best work. Thank you to those of you who are Business of Design members. We are sincerely grateful and we feel we have many more designers to reach and your support helps us do that. So thank you. I think that's it, right? So go to businessofdesign.com and that's where you'll find the show notes. That's where you'll find the Excel spreadsheet. That's the compound interest calculator. That is where you'll find more information about business of design programs, events, and everything BOD. And speaking of everything BOD, I'm going to turn things over to Cheryl. Hey, Cheryl. Hey, Kimberly. Uh, I'm going to do things a little bit differently today. Usually we, you know, choose one or two events and go into them in detail. Uh, I want to go through a little bit of a checklist. I've been getting a lot of questions lately, whether it's something that I mentioned during announcements or that you mentioned, you know, in the middle of an interview because it's relevant. And I get a lot of questions about, I heard this on the podcast. Where do I find this on the website? So I just sort of want to do a quick run through of a a whole bunch of things that are new to the website or events that are coming up because businessofdesign.com is kind of a busy place these days. Um, in terms of events, uh, tomorrow we have BOD Live and we're going to be talking about project management software. So members, please join me for this conversation. Share what you're using, what you've tried. Uh, we get so many questions about this, so we're going to have that as our next BOD Live meeting. Uh, all of our BOD Live meetings, we usually like to have the next two or three always posted and you can find those in the events section. Um, also coming up, uh, we've got our next two, which are team facing procedures, your in office procedures, not your client facing procedures. We're going to focus on uh, with Janine from Team BOD in August. And then we're doing a book club in September and we're going to be reading Atomic Habits. So if you're interested in joining us for that, it's a quick read, um, but make sure you start that now. Uh, also in events, we're doing the BOD contract for commercial projects. You're going to find that in both events and in the contract section of the BOD shop because that's where it's going to live after this live seminar. So it's two hours where Kimberly's going to walk through how to run a commercial project through the BOD 15 that includes a copy of her commercial contract. So to take part in the live seminar, please register and you can take part in the Q&A portion of that. After that, the contract and the recording from the seminar will be available in the BOD shop in the contracts section. Uh, also coming up, our BOD boss group. We do still have that one last spot and we are waiting for the perfect member to add to that group. It's a really strong group and we are really excited about this group. Applications are still open. And finally, in events, uh, not until March 2023, but Kimberly and Janine will be heading to Australia to do the BOD 15. It's going to be a two-day intensive live seminar in Sydney, Australia, hosted by Boyd Blue and in partnership with our longtime member, Jody Carter, who will weigh in on how these steps apply to those in Australia, because that's a question we get all the time. So also on the website, we've launched two new member programs recently, Business of Design's Salary, Revenue, Profit, and Wealth. Um, you know, we're, we're doing a deep dive into your numbers and going beyond what you should be paying yourself, the difference between your salary and the leftover revenue and how to develop profit and all of this with the end goal of accumulating independent wealth. So if you've taken the other systems and you are um, actively working towards profitability in your business, that's an amazing course to take. And also it sort of complements that course. The other program we've just launched is Money Mindset, Expertise and Value to really, um, you're not just charging an hourly rate. That rate represents the expertise that you are providing to your clients. So really understanding the mindset behind how to charge and what you're charging to come up with that position and value uh, that you bring to the table and price accordingly to that. So that's two new programs, 
both available to Business of Design members. And then last, I know I thought I'm going through a lot. Complete details for all of this are on the website. And of course, if you've got questions, reach out to me at any time, Cheryl at businessofdesign.com. But I do want to cover one more thing. When you go into the BOD shop and click on on demand courses, these are past uh, webinars, virtual seminars that we've done, and we continue to make the recordings available uh, for purchase afterwards. So due to, uh, you know, popular request after the live version ended, the BOD flat fee projects seminar that we did a couple weeks ago uh, is now available as an on-demand course. So the three-hour recording, a copy of the presentation, as well as the project fees cheat sheet that Kimberly created is available on the website as an on-demand course. When you purchase, you're going to have access to that course for 30 days. In that same category, you're also going to find our uh, interior design packages course, as well as the BOD hiring process course. And we will be adding to that. So again, so much going on at Business of Design. If you ever have problems uh, finding something that you're looking for, let me know. I'm always available to help. But uh, you know, your first stop should be businessofdesign.com and check out what we're doing in the events, programs, and the BOD shop. Thanks so much. Welcome to the Business of Design podcast with Kimberly Selden. Business of Design is the world's best business training for interior design professionals like you. We have the systems, strategies, and protocols you need to consistently satisfy clients, increase profitability, and run your projects like a boss. Unlike traditional coaching, BOD is a fast track to immediate results. Don't try to do this alone. Join today and you'll have access to hundreds of targeted training modules, plus member perks like BOD Live events, member-only podcasts, preferred pricing, and the support of an engaged community of peers. We all know design matters. At Business of Design, we think designers matter too. You should be investing in your personal wealth at all times in your business from day one. And that seems like a great place to launch episode 282, Invest in You with Danielle Hayden, who's going to share her insights on small business owners and how they invest or don't invest in themselves. Um, I think one of the things that we see far too often with our clients is that we wait until the time is right for everything. And um, we forego investing in our own retirements. We forego purchasing uh, in the stock market or investing in um, in the stocks or maybe our, our own IRAs. So um, from day one, when we are setting our fees, when we are understanding what our overhead costs are, that is built into our overhead because you are an employee of your business and you should be contributing to your retirement from day one. And that should be part of your operating your operating costs. So even if you're a relatively new business and you're investing in things like marketing and uh, growth and new computers and all those things, it still makes sense for you to hold back a portion of that. Don't spend it all. Hold back something to pull outside of the business and begin to grow wealth. Yeah. It doesn't have to be a lot, right? We always want to go big, right? Because social media has us thinking that everything has to be big and profound. Um, James Clear, Atomic Habits. I, I talk about this book all the time because it is it is s- slowing down, right? We don't have to go for the gold every time. We don't have to go run the marathon. We have to we have to take one step. And so early on in our business, maybe we're investing one percent, right? And that or ten dollars a week, mm-hmm. hundred dollars a month, right? You're starting very small and making investments. And as your business grows and as um, your clients grow and as your pricing structure grows, then you can increase that over time. And that doesn't have to be major jumps either, right? We're, we're working with small amounts, small increases as we move forward. And if you're looking at these reports every single month, you can start to do this with confidence. Mm -hmm. Even from early on, I would like for every single interior designer, the day that you start bringing in money from clients, right? The day that you start to, to incur revenue, that is the day that you have a bookkeeping system in place because that is how you're going to be able to understand this, these numbers and make these decisions. So you can say to yourself, I can take this amount 
right now because I've looked at the numbers. I know what I'm doing. I have the data to back up my decisions. I've worked with my bookkeeper to understand this information and I can confidently now make these investments. And the sooner you begin to pull that money out, the sooner you'll see if you're not you know, um, if you're not profitable, because it become really obvious if you don't have enough money and then you have to do something like, I, I say this all the time. One of the worst things that happened to me is I didn't really have to earn a living because I had a high earning partner. And so I was able to snow myself, lie to myself, live in an alternate universe where I told myself, I'm just building sweat equity. It's okay if I put all the money back into the business because, I'm just growing this for some future date, but my God, time goes really, really fast, right? Time, time goes by. And, and I love that you brought that up because it's another, I call them self-fulfilling prophecies, right? Are there these stories that we tell ourselves as business owners? And I've heard every version of this story. I don't, I don't need to make money. I don't, I don't need to take this home. Um, it's just a side hustle or I'm just doing this a part time while I'm raising the kids or right. I'm doing this for fun. I'm for just good fun. At it. Oh, it's so yeah. fun. <laughs> I'm doing this for fun. Or I started, I started doing this for just family and friends. And mm-hmm. then there, they started to refer me to their friends and family. Yeah. So it felt like a friends and family business, a favor I was doing. And then it slowly becomes no longer a favor, right? You're charging money, you're, you have a business. But these are all, it's really important to recognize the story that you're telling yourself uh, and, and acknowledge it, right? Make peace with it without judgment. And, and we don't have to be harsh on ourselves. Like, Danielle told me to listen to the story and now I have to shame myself for it. <laughs> you don't have to shame yourself for it. You just have to recognize that that's the story that you're telling yourself and start to take the steps because there's nothing wrong with every single business owner out there making a living for themselves and investing in their own personal wealth, their family's wealth. And we are contributing back to the economy when we're able to prioritize ourselves in that way. Yeah. Nobody wins from us playing small. Let's put it that way. It's just not, yeah. it's not sustainable either. Um, we actually have a, a new course that we launched uh, and one of the courses is money mindset, and it's all about that narrative. You know, I, you, the way you grow up, the way you grew up, the how you were taught to handle money and deal with money, and was it a secret? Was it forbidden? Was it you know uncouth to talk about it? All those things have these impacts on you, and if you're not aware of it, you'll just. I'll, at least I'll speak for myself. I carried my immature uh, approach to money into my adult business, which was a huge mistake. So just being aware of it is really, really important. So everybody, wherever they are, you're saying, Danielle, start where you are and begin to make an investment immediately in your future. Yeah. I want you to making that investment right now. You are not running a a not-for-profit. We are running businesses so that we can run profitable businesses so that we can take care of ourselves and take care of our families. Um, work with your bookkeeping team. Uh, I call it your money team. Work with your money team to look at the numbers and what is showing you today and then work with them to decide on what that amount is that you can afford so that you can still be profitable. I don't want you taking money and then you operating at a severe loss, but work with your money team so that you are profitable and taking home a paycheck and and investing in your, your future. I like that. You mentioned a book, but I'm not clear on what the title was. Oh, uh, Atomic Habit, Habits, James Clear. Okay. I've never read that. So it's, you got to read it is what you're saying. Look at her face. Like it. you better uh, read that yeah. right now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Atomic it. uh, Habits. It's, it's a Atomic Habits, James Clear. It's a um, very easy read. Um, listen to it on Audible. Um, it really is helpful and um it's something I've always struggled with personally that I want to do the big thing, right? I want to make the big investments. Right. I want to run the marathon. I don't want to run the 5k. I want to run the marathon. I want to set the right. I want to set the big goals right here, right now. And it's taking that step back. And I think this is really important for all of us as business owners, especially when we're living in an online world where we can get really sucked into a lot of these vanity metrics and everybody showing the highlights of their life. 
to step back and say, it's okay to do one small thing. Mm -hmm. And those small things are going to compound. It's like compounding interest. They're going to compound on each other and you're going to create these habits for success. I had this uh, girlfriend in California and she was essentially the only wage earner in the family, but she would put away $50 a week, $50. And today, of course, 30 years later, she has something like $275,000 that she's able to invest in whatever she wants. And that was not her only savings account, but that was just a slush fund she decided to do automatically withdrawing $50. So $50, $50, we can all do that. Yeah, I like the dollar a day. Um, my daughter's doing a dollar a day. Um, and we did the calculations um, of where she'll be in 20 years if she continues to do a dollar a day and not touch it. What? Okay, what are the calculations? I, I would have to pull up the spreadsheet. We did it like six months ago. She, I want to know this. Will you yeah. follow up with us? I'm just so curious yeah. because what a great I, challenge for everybody. A dollar a day, come on. Yeah. Right. Most sense. of us are spending more than that on a Starbucks run. Yeah. Right? Well, I like to challenge myself that every time I want to go to Starbucks or um, Dunkin' Donuts or, or get coffee out and about, um, I tell myself, why am I investing in their future? That I'm going to take those dollars and invest it in my future. And mm-hmm. I have an app on my phone that I can literally go to Fidelity. And if I resist the temptation to go to Starbucks, I can take that $4.50, transfer it into my Fidelity account and purchase a um, a stock, a bond, um, or a mutual fund. And that way I am saying I get to keep this this money. I get to keep this investment instead of me giving it to Starbucks profit. I love that. I think too often, and maybe it's changing, maybe you're seeing that it's changing, but too often female entrepreneurs are not sort of wired to know this stuff from the beginning of the business. Do you see that there's a change happening and people are becoming uh, financially salient or financially uh, savvy? Unfortunately, no, I cannot say that it's changed. Uh, you know, I, I've, um, I started Kickstarter County Inc. eight years ago. And over the eight years, I have to say, I have heard the same stories and the same struggles, different versions of it from each person. But the theme is always the same. I went to school for XYZ, or I'm really good at this. I am really passionate about this. And so I created this business but nobody ever taught me the business side. Right. And so they don't know how. Um, Yeah, my daughter's in high school right now. They still have not taught anything about um, managing a checkbook or understanding investments. And so it's not changing at the school system level either. Wow. I remember when my kids were in high school, I'm like, they need a financial literacy course. That's the only course I care about. We just couldn't get the school to do it. But that's what they need. That's what they need, and they still yeah. don't have it. Right. So, and the thing um, is, when they graduate from high school at eighteen, Visa, Mastercard send them credit cards, and they have no flipping cute. Right? My son got himself so in debt. We're like, what on earth did you do? And he had no idea what interest or compound interest was. But it's the same for business owners, right? Yeah. We start these businesses and yeah. we think that we need all the fancy systems and gadgets. And so we take out credit cards and line of, lines of credit so that we can buy all the fancy stuff so we can keep up with the next business owner. Um, and we don't know how to manage the money. We don't know how to look at the finances. And our money mindsets so often keep us from even looking at the information, right? We have um, habits of avoidance, um, you know, we, we don't want to look at the, I call it the report card effect. Um, we've gotten report cards every quarter of our, our, our lives. And so we're waiting for these financial statements. Like it's a report card of our success if we're failing or not. And so we avoid the financial statements. We avoid looking at the, at the numbers. Um, so I wish I could say that this isn't changing, but what I will say is that I am on a mission to talk to as many business owners as I can uh, to help to help arm people with the information that they need to understand the numbers and to overcome the money mindset to be able to ask for help. Because here's the other uh, problem I see is that, especially as female entrepreneurs, for some reason, we think we have to do it all. Yeah. Now, I remember back to my corporate days. I started as a corporate CFO. And I promise you, the CEO that I worked for 
He was not head of finance. He was not head of sales. He wasn't head of marketing. He was literally the CEO, and that's what he was supposed to do. As business owners, we think for some reason, now that we've started this business, we have to do every single department ourselves, and we're supposed to do it well. That's not your zone of genius, and that's not why you started the business. And so we have this mindset um, around owning every single task and owning every single thing that we need to do in this business. And I'm here to tell you that you do not need to. It's okay to ask for help. Well, I know what the what the rebuttal to that is, but I'm not I'm not earning enough money, so I can't. That's and raise your well, prices. Right, exactly. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. There you heard it. Okay, Danielle. Raise your prices. Yes, yes. Oh my God. Such a good conversation and definitely worth having uh, another uh, run at it. Um, thank you so much. We like to end every episode with design intervention. Just a great piece of advice you think the audience really needs. Um, ask for help, you know, um, take, take action. Um, you know, in, in running my own business and with working with hundreds of clients over the years, um, I never have heard somebody say, well, geez, I wish I would have never hired. Right. Um, we always hear from our clients. I wish I would have hired sooner, whether that be, um, you know, direct business, you know, contractors or employees to help you carry out the day-to-day operations, a bookkeeper or or marketing, whatever it might be, whatever is draining your energy today, it's time to get help so that you can, that energy that you'll get back, you're going to put that energy back into your business and you're going to find a way. I know that you are. I believe in entrepreneurs. I believe in entrepreneurship. And so my Closing piece of advice is for everybody to go get the help that they need and get their energy back. Yeah, it's almost like you're wearing six hats. So decide which is your hat and put the other five on some other person who's better at those jobs. Yes. I love it. Thank you so much. It was great talking to you. Yes, you're so welcome. Thank you for being part of the Business of Design community and supporting BOD's mission to improve the industry one design business at a time. It's time for you to take the next step and join Business of Design. Like thousands of design professionals in 50 countries around the world, you'll find the systems, strategies, and protocols you need to dramatically improve your business and transform your life. What are you waiting for? Start today.